Uh, my name is Tuta Vionki. I'm a rally co-driver, uh, what is also known as a navigator. I'm currently uh, navigating uh, for Eric Bengi in the uh, Meningai Cream Racing Team. As far as I can remember, I was mostly a tomboy. Um, in fact, the other day I was joking with my mom about coming home in dirty clothes during the rainy season and getting a whooping for that. But fun had to be had uh, growing up. I've also always been involved in one sport or another. Athletics, I used to be a sprinter, 100 meters, 200, you didn't go too far after high school. Um, I also played basketball uh, in college. I played hockey in high school. But then after that, you don't know what to do with yourself, especially if you're used to being in team sports. So I had to look for something fun to do. After college, I studied human resource management. Uh, I'm a human resource consultant. And that took me off the rally scene as a spectator for some time, just to focus on school. But then after that, you're like, okay, so I work during the week, what do I do on the weekend? And as a rally fan, I um, used to watch a lot of rallying and at some point decided that um, we want to tour the country. And the best way to do that was to follow the national championship because it basically goes to eight different towns every year. I've climbed mountains, I've been to Kilimanjaro, I've done many other crazy things. So I love, the, I love cars and the thrill of cars. Um, actually, before I got into rallying, I was a fast driver, oh, what I now call careless driver. I didn't realize the concept of safety and not just safety for yourself in the car but safety for other road users and pedestrians so we would, we would basically time ourselves what time did you do from Westlands to Mombasa Road it's crazy but uh, once I got into a rally car I, I appreciated the safety of the car it's a car that will fall 10 times and people will walk out of it and it's a car that uh, because you're racing in a selected circuit, you are not likely to meet either pedestrians or other road users. You're all going in the same direction. So when I appreciated that, then I realized in my car, if the road sign says 50, you just drive at 50. <laughs> as sometimes boring as it is, there's a reason why, you know, you basically start seeing the road signs and do not cross over a continuous yellow line and that kind of thing. And you really get to appreciate road safety once you've been in, in a rally car. So my thrill, my adrenaline uh, is left in the car on weekends. <laughs> when I come back to the roads, I'm that boring driver and people will want to foot at you when you've stopped at, at a red light because they're in a hurry, but you know if you jump the light you might meet another car. Basically, when I decided to race, I, I talked to a driver that I knew as a friend, as a family friend, Charles Hinger. He was already racing. And of course, as fans, we wanted to see him win. And you know, you really get involved. And he introduced me to Abdul Sidi Rally Academy. Uh, Abdul Sidi basically is a former navigator, uh, was a co-driver for, I'm sure everybody knows Patrick Njiro, might know, have heard of Patrick Njiro. So he started a school as a way of giving back to the sport. It's free, he announces the classes on social media. So you show up on Saturday and he takes you through um, the basics of co-driving. He teaches you how to read notes, how to keep time, and uh, the other roles of a navigator. And basically we read notes uh, to the driver. Our work is to make sure that we get them right so that the driver can kanyaga mafuta um, without any fear, because he knows that uh, you're giving him the proper directions. Um, what we do is uh, a day or two before the event, we do what we call Reiki. We are given the route map by the organizers. We go around the route, taking, on, taking down our own notes. Uh, so those are the notes you read back to the driver on the day of the event. We call them pace notes. And they're basically obstacles. Like I'll tell you, in 100 meters, you'll find a ditch on the right, so keep left. So in that, with that in mind, the driver can basically know which line to take and he's keeping le left because there's a ditch on the right or there's what we call uh, maybe a medium jump. It means he has probably geared down to take that kind of jump and land safely. 
uh, we are basically calling out the obstacles and telling him where to keep the car. Um, they are blind, we say they are blind. Uh, Abdul Mwalimu likes to say they are stupid as well. So <laughs> they basically have to listen to, to what the co-driver is saying for, for them to get to, to the end as fast as possible. For you to win a race, the organizers basically look at who took the shortest time on each competitive stage. We'll have a number of competitive stages between 5, 12 to 12. Um, that's where the time is calculated. We also keep time. We have a time card and what we call a navigator's watch. So between the start of the competitive section and the end, we calculate that time using that uh, special uh, navigator's watch to make sure that the, the controllers at each control get your time right. If you lose a second or miss a second, you could lose the race because of that. Uh, if you're going into a control early because you're given specific time from one end to the other, uh, if you get to a control early, you have to stop outside before you go in. If you go in early, you, you, lose a, you lose a minute. If you go in late, you lose a second for every minute. So there's a lot of calculation to be done. And uh, that's when you realize that mental sum <laughs> Are not so easy. It's when you're in that, under that pressure to, to do that calculation. You find people with calculators adding 14 plus 12 because at that point it doesn't make sense, you know. So uh, it's intense in that way but it's also so much fun. Uh, we have what we, we an intercom in the car and uh, we wear helmets that are connected to the intercom to make communication easier. There's a lot of noise in these cars and on rough roads so for the notes to be clear, we have to, to wear that kind of equipment. Our suits are fireproof. Um, in case you roll, you're given that like one minute opportunity to get out of the car safely. Um, we wear something else inside, fireproof clothing and socks and uh, the inner of the helmet is also fireproof. We wear balaclava. Cars have caught fire and people have managed to get out of. Because we use um, either aviation gas or maybe V power depending on the make of your car. So it's highly inflammable. If you hit something wrongly, it goes up in flames. So that's, that's part of uh, why we have to wear the safety gear. You have to be in sync completely. Uh, you have to be uh, on the same pace. If, if I read the notes too fast, then I lose the driver. If I'm too slow and he's faster than me, then again I lose the driver. Then he's not able to really focus on the road. And um, my notes have to be so precise, such that he has the confidence, or she has, we have female drivers, the confidence to, to know that he can basically drive without worrying about, about anything. So that uh, being in sync, and it doesn't happen to everybody. You have to find that person who you're in sync with. Um, the worst that can happen is you could roll. That's the worst that can happen. Um, we've had a few minor injuries, um, a few deaths, but I, I can't remember one in this country because uh, the structure of the car is also, the roll cage is really, really tough. Uh, scrutineering is done before an event to make sure that the structure of the car is, is up to spec. Um, that's the worst that can happen. In between, you could lose time and it's a competition because by the time it stops you to say, what did you say? Where are we again? You know, that's a lot of time lost. We are competing within seconds with the driver in front of you. So other than the accident, it's about the time and the competition. We get into it for fun, but it's a sport. So <laughs> at one point or another, it will be about, about competition. Uh, this is a roll cage and you can see it goes round through the, through the whole car. This is what um, basically prevents, in case of a roll, then you're sure that uh, the body won't cave in uh, because that's what basically hurts people, injures people. So you can roll a few times and not get injured. If a car catches fire and you're not um, like close to a, a, maybe a control, it's your work to try and put out that fire. So we have fire extinguishers, but the car also has what you might not see, but an inbuilt uh, pl uh, plumbing extinguisher. So there's a button here that you just press in case there's a fire like coming from the engine and it's powder. So it basically tries to put out that fire. 
So safety is very, very key. I don't think we'd be doing those crazy speeds if the car wasn't built this way. Uh, at the back, we have our spare tires and um, the jack uh, and everything that we need. In case you get a puncture, again, you're in a competition. So as quickly as possible, you need to be able to change the puncture and continue. Um, other than uh, just reading the notes, we have what we call a trip meter. This is the trip meter. It basically shows the core driver the, the distances and interdistances uh, to enable me call the next note uh, faster. My buttons are down here. That's for the trip meter. Then the driver is not able to drive, change gears, and maybe hoot if you find maybe animals or something like that at the same time. If we get a, a lot of wildlife or just cattle. So I also have my horn down there. When it's rainy and muddy like we've had in the last few events, then we also have a, a wiper. So other than reading notes, there's a bit of footwork for the core driver. So that's uh, basically what the core driver does. I um, think that's it. Oh, I'll show you a bit of our safety belt. It's not your usual belt that goes across your chest in a normal car. We call this a six point belt because it basically buckles down there and then up here. So once you have that, you're basically strapped up in the car such that uh, if you roll, you hardly ever move. And the belts need to be so tight uh, so that your back doesn't move. A lot of people get back injuries if the belts are not tightly belted. So uh, these are part of the safety, safety features. You have other buttons that show us uh, the weather. Oh, sorry, if there's fog, what do we do? If, there's, uh, if the fuel is going down, uh, the switch on, on and off button, the ignition basically, and this is what I talked about, the fire extinguisher. These basically are rally tires, and um, we have to keep checking the temperature, like after each section. If it goes too high, then you're likely to get a puncture, uh, because of the, it basically starts bulging. So after each section, we have a small gadget that the driver normally keeps. We check the temperature, we make sure that it's where we want it to be, based again on the conditions, the weather and the gravel. So there's a lot that goes into that. We also have to calculate before the event fuel, how much fuel do you need? Uh, everybody knows how much their car consumes per kilometer. So if you get that wrong, you stall and you can't refuel anywhere outside the refueling section. So your rally ends there. The thrill, I think, <laughs> that I can sit in a car and we are flying and I'm thinking, you're a bit slow, like move faster, and you know it's in a safe environment. Um, the fact that I'm able to enjoy that, that the racing basically, and uh, I love to win as well, so <laughs> I'm a bit competitive, so um, doing something that you love and seeing the results at the end of the day, I think is something everybody wants to do, so there's, there's so much, there's so much uh, excitement just being in the car, and sometimes um, when you're reading the notes, it's so intense that you're not thinking about anything else. But at the end, you're like, man, you took that jump so well. You know, you are so high up. But during, when you're reading the notes, you can't even comment because the minute you start talking about other things or looking outside or looking at other things, that's it. You're completely lost. So we talk about the exciting things after the race. Did you see that corner? Yeah, did you enjoy it? Yeah, did you see the jump? Yeah, you know, that kind of thing. So, and then of course there are people who, like um, my family, friends, you know, just people who encourage you, are excited to come and watch the race. And there are kids who want to do this, you know. So just talking to them and telling them, you know, you can do it. Now, my first race was very exciting because um, the guy I co co drove or navigated was a former co-driver, luckily for me. 
it means he's more patient with my mistakes because he's been there. Uh, his name is Victor Okundi and he was very patient. And we drove the first VIT rally car in the country. So of course there was excitement around that, it's a VIT and you know, so of course people were saying uh, it's a VIT because it's a woman in the co-driver's seat, but of course that was not the case. It was in Mogotio, rough terrain and we nursed that car to the end. We, we, were, it was a, we have different categories, Group N, Group S, two-wheel drive. It's a two-wheel drive car, we came third. Uh, my first race, of course I made mistakes, I missed notes and he kept telling me, don't worry, you just keep going, we are fine, you know. And I think that encouragement is what kept me in the sport. If you start with a driver who doesn't understand that you're new and you'll make mistakes, and uh, we, we jokingly say that drivers don't make mistakes, all the mistakes are made by the navigator. Even when he makes a mistake, it's your mistake. So I was lucky in that sense that I had somebody who not only taught me, but was very patient with the teaching. But it was fun. Back then, because I, I think things have changed a bit, we're in a faster car, we're in a more competitive position. But back then, we'd take a jump and it would be like, woo, you know? <laughs> that was an awesome jump. So we had fun in that sense, that it was more for fun than competition. And um, we both were enjoying the new things. Him as a driver, me as a co-driver that you were doing in the car. And you'd take a corner and you'd enjoy it so much that, you know, we would say, okay, let's get back to the notes and, and move on. It, it was fun. But as you grow and you move to different classes and the higher classes, uh, right now we're in the Premier League. We have the Premier League uh, Division 1, 2 and 3. You start from Division 3, then we're in Division 3. Then it becomes competition and you don't have time to enjoy the jumps and, you know, <laughs> to enjoy the corners. Uh, you talk about them later. So the intensity at the, that, that level is different. So I've enjoyed it all. I moved gradually from Division 3 to 2 to 1 and to the Premier class and each is different and you have fun, different levels. Uh, but when it comes to competition, then you start also enjoying the competition and enjoying the seconds and looking for where can I make it better for the team? Um, you learn how to read the notes in a way that you're controlling the driver to either go faster or to slow down. Because so, they also get carried away. We tell him a 1.5 kilometer flat out section and he'll just go and you're calling the next note and you can tell he's not listening. So you have to, hey, hey, you know, repeat the note, shout, there's a caution. Because he's enjoying it so much. Um, if you don't take, you can't enjoy it at that point. Because if you don't take charge, then your race could end there. But it's all fun, from whatever level that you start from, it's, 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 it's a lot of fun. Sometimes, like if you become a mother, you slow down, or right now it's mostly finances. I think if you're going to tell your husband you need money to rally, and he's thinking, do you want to buy your kids food or do you want to rally? You know? you, sometimes it's that, but basically the numbers have gone down. When I started out uh, in the class, we were, quite a number of ladies who are joining at the same time and uh, we're all excited to, you know, to basically have each other. Then when you start moving up the classes and you tell somebody who's driving a faster car, like a Group N car, I want to, like a Subaru, to, can I go drive with you and look at you like, are you sure you can, you know? Well, like, yeah, there's nothing difficult. I'm, I'm, women are known to be, to multitask better than men. And that's what you're doing with the buttons I've shown you and the notes and my watch and the trip meter. Women would actually be better at co-driving than men. That's what I believe. Of course, men will argue, but... <laughs> and they'll say we are, there are more men in the sport than women. But I believe that our power or ability to multitask is something that people overlook. There are so many things that you do in that car. Sometimes uh, we, have two, we have a section that we're doing twice. And when you do the first run, the driver realizes, oh, we need to change that note. So you are reading the note and changing the, the previous note or putting it in your mind that once we stop, I need to change this note on this page so that it reads, I read it better the next time. I have a trip meter. I have my foot out there. It's like playing drums or <laughs> with both all your limbs, basically. Uh, and I think women are, are better built to, to do that. Any woman can join this sport. It's not for men. 
um, there are more men of course but uh, I think if women realize that it's not for men and uh, that it's safe because I think that's the other thing that women fear they fear that it's not a safe sport a man will jump off a cliff and hope to and women won't do that because like you said they, we are not risk takers but you're more in danger in your normal car <laughs> or at risk than in your normal daily ride to work than in a rally car. The only difference is the speeds. But from what you've seen, uh, the safety measures that we put into these cars, you're actually safer there. So if you just enjoy a good weekend, good weekend out of town and in a fast car and in a safe environment, this spot is for you. Initially, a lot of people thought it was a joke. Um, I think perceptions are changing, especially about women. You'll find that a lot of the, the, the circuits or the routes that we go to uh, in Mashambani, Kenya, if you're going to Eldoret, it's in the farms. If you're going to maybe Kiliki, it's deep in the, the villages and the farms. So the spectators there still get amazed by, oh, it's a woman, you know? Um, if you go to Meru, where I come from, they're like, woo! I mean, there's a woman in the car, so it's... Back there, I, th I think they still have a lot to get uh, used to, but uh, they, they get excited by it. They look at it as a positive thing. And then I've had people in Nairobi telling me I want my daughter to get into the sport. What advice would you give her? And my daughter loves speed, but you want her to do it the right way. And we call this the right way because it's safe. So I've, I've it's basically mixed feelings, and they are, but mostly positive. I think my biggest lesson is to always give my best. Like always, always give my best. Uh, it, it's fun, it's enjoyable, but then you also have to think about the rest of the team and your role. If, if you're the weakest link, then you basically destroy a, a whole team. So plus also interaction. You interact with a lot of people. There are controllers in the sections, there are marshals, there are organizers. And that interaction and communication with respect is something that, that's very important for the sport and that has taught me a lot. They're interacting with different kinds of people, so I think, I think there's a lot to be learned. Patience as well, because there are days uh, the guy on the other side will be, <laughs> and you need to be very patient and discuss those things after the event. So patience is another lesson that I've learned from I was a very impatient person, but this has taught me a lot. Because you can't fight about every small thing, and uh, you, sometimes you choose not to fight, because then there are a lot more people depending on you. So um, I've learned a lot of, a lot of uh, kubumilia, so, <laughs> so to say. It's, it's not bad. It's not like at every day you're kubumilia, but, but you learn how to if the car breaks down today, the next event and the next event, you can always look for somebody to blame. But then we choose to take responsibility as a team. I think my final words would be to mothers of girls and <laughs> fathers of girls. Encourage your kids to take up the sport um, from an early age. Let them enjoy cutting, let them learn different things, let them learn resilience because sometimes it comes with that. I've seen kids who do two laps of autocross and they're tired and they want to sleep and allow them to sleep, but they know next time they'll do three laps and four laps and it helps, it really helps them grow. I've also seen kids who've learned to interact with adults because then your, your organizers and officials are grown-ups and as a child, you still have to interact with them. So I would love to see more girls get into the sport through cutting and autocross and eventually see women winning the national championship. It's doable, it's possible. We have to do it, we don't have a choice. <laughs> but, but it's something that, that I, I want to do, you know, and want to see, I won't be here forever, but want to see more women. Even get involved in organizing, we have different clubs, find out from the federation which club you can join. Come in as a controller, as a marshal, as a steward. There's a lot that women can do in the sport.